Hi there, it's Arava here and um, bringing you a pretty different kind of video. I don't usually do this, or if I do, I usually do it as a kind of dual com. But the feelings are pretty raw right now. Um, I've been thinking about this for a, for, for a while now, since uh, the past month basically. Um, while I've been recording stuff, and you'll see the topic of the video is F1 2014. Um, you know, talking about it, and I've just been thinking through my head right now because uh, I'm I'm sitting here kind of just looking at you know what I'm going to be doing in the next month for F1 videos, and I just started thinking, and um, it, the feelings are pretty kind of like right here with me. So I thought I'd make this commentary right now instead of kind of letting these raw kind of feelings and thoughts kind of get wasted on uh, making up a worse video. So um, yeah, basically today I'm going to be talking about. F1 2014, and what 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 I'm hoping it is, what it, what it needs to be to kind of kick re kickstart the F1 game franchise because at this moment in time, it's starting to look a bit bleak. It's starting to look very slow. Um, you, you're gonna you're gonna sense a lot of frustration in my tone of voice when I talk about the current F1 game. Um, but you know, you, you know, you shouldn't take too much into that. I still enjoy F1 2013 offline. Offline, it's very, it's very solid. It's a solid, usual F1 game like it has been for the last four games. Um, online, though, it's got some, it's got some issues, and I, and I, and I know Codemasters are doing all their best to try and fix it. And I'll be tweeting this to Codemasters. I hope. I really hope they watch it, and you guys can help out by tweeting this to Codemasters, um, because I'm going to be just, this is an honest commentary, I'm not going to be getting angry or anything like that, I'm not going to be getting any sort of kind of, I'm not going to suck up or anything like that, I'm just going to say what I feel and what a few, a lot of people are thinking that are around me and that I, you know, follow on Twitter and race with and yada yada yada. Um, yeah, so F1 2013. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's not been the best F1 game. Um, it's probably it's probably probably the third best, third best F1 game. The best F1 game being F1 2010, as a sort of blockbuster kind of whoa first F1 game on uh, PS3 and Xbox 360. Then came F1 2012, which was a really solid solid game. F1 2013 and then F1 2011, which I feel 2011 was very very weird and strange the the handling was everyone agreed the handling was very weird as you know as a wheeled user you had to go lock to lock to move the f1 cars which isn't how an f f1 car moves but anyway we're getting away from the point so f1 2013 probably the third best game um simply the career mode okay let's rank this in terms of career mode and then online all right in terms of career mode f1 2013 is probably the second best the first being f1 2012 um and the yeah second is F1 2013. In terms of online, F1 2013 has got to be the worst one yet. Um, and there's no get, get getting away from the fact we can't get away. From, you can't sugarcoat it any 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 way. It is the worst one out of the four. And it's weird that the, the the order is in descending order from when it came out. F1 2010 is the best online. F1 2011 is then second. Then F1 2012 is third, and F1 2013 is last. Um, and I'm not sure why that is. Um, I've talked to a few other people, and apparently, you know, you know, they change. Uh, Codemasters have changed the net code or something like that, or the way they do the connectivity or whatnot, and. I don't know. It just seems F1 2010. There were no problems. I'm not sure if like that's because everything else was a bit less, a bit more basic, and wasn't as complex as it is in F1 2013. Therefore, they had more space to fit in all this magic that helped the online be, be perfect. There was no, no lag, lag in F1 2010. The occasional jumps, obviously, there's always going to be that. There's always a tiny, tiny bit of lag. There is in every game, Call of Duty Ghosts. Has some horrendous lag compensation, some lag between players. You know, FIFA has some horrendous lag as well at some times. I mean, Ultimate Team doesn't even work um, sometimes on, I'm hearing, on the Xbox One. And Clubs is just a failure on Xbox One for FIFA. Um, every game has it, but F1 2013, 
going on from F1 2010, we're just taking the four-year comparison. After four years, it has got significantly worse, not better. And I'm just asking why. Just, just, just. just I'm, I'm not sure. Like, if, if it. If they if they did change something, or things are just changing because they're pushing the consoles to the max to the to the point where the console can't perform the online stuff as well as it could do in 2010 when there was less stress on the console, and you know I'm I'm just not sure you know um, yeah I'm I'm not sure, but I did I hope I hope that in F1 2014 things will be better. Um, it seems on next gen I've got a PS4 if you didn't know, um. And it seems on the PS4, and I'm hearing on the Xbox One, connections are just very, very solid. They're much better. Um, on Xbox One, they have, you know, significant improvements on Call of Duty Ghosts. I wouldn't know too much on PS4 because I haven't uh, played it that much. I've played one online match um, on PS4. But I've played FIFA on PS4, and I've played uh, Need for Speed. And uh, the only con disconnections I've had were due to the EA servers themselves, not to not not due to like you know PSN or anything. So it seems like the connectivity is much better. And when the EA servers are up and running and they're not under maintenance, they're fine. They're completely crystal fine, no problems. It seems like it's running m a lot smoother with uh, lag issues and lag sync and whatnot. And I just hope that on F1 2014, it's a lot better because it needs to improve because. You know, in F1 2012, we had the lag bubble. They sorted that out, but it seems like there's been a trade-off. You, We don't get lag bubble now in F1 2013, but we get lag sync issues. We get cars on the Xbox that are going everywhere, and I understand they've solved that with a patch, I think. So, uh, good, you know, that's a good one. That's a really good one for the Codemasters there. You know, uh, if you didn't know, they actually got, um, you know, they partnered with the uh, Apex Racing League. Uh, Fizzy fan did a brilliant job of watching Fizzy. Well done on that. Um, you know, you set that up quite well. A nice lobby for the Codemasters guys to test stuff. And that was really good of Fizzy to set that up. And it was much needed for the Xbox guys to help them solve a major problem that was just on the Xbox. But they still haven't solved the general thing that's been affecting Xbox and PS3, which has been... Um, the fact that one you get the 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 cars still have glitches. Uh, they fix the equal car stuff between the Lotus and the Marussia, to the rest of the grid. But you get stuff like the McLaren having higher gears at Bahrain, the Williams having lower gears at Canada, and who knows what will come up next when the ARL and you know other leagues go to other races and find out other glitches. Who knows, really? Um, there are some huge lag tap issues. Um, so essentially, lag bubble. It's not completely out. There are a few lag taps when the, the connectivity is so poor. There are lag taps. But there are side pod glitches, oversensitive cars on the PS3. That you, you'll know from my F1 Return to Glory with TMF Marduk, Ben. He has raced both platforms. And he can tell you straight off, the PS3 sensitivity is abysmal. It is abysmal. It, you touch a side pod and you go spinning. You touch a tire and you go flying off into the barriers. You touch a rear rear wing to a front wing, and you will literally just spun 360 or something. It's just it's just not on. It's just it shouldn't happen. After four years of development, it, it why is it still happening? And. I don't know. It doesn't seem like the answer can be found within Codemasters. I don't know if it's the consoles. I hope to God it's the consoles and it's something maybe Codemasters can't fix because then then they, they then they've done nothing wrong. And to be honest, they haven't done much wrong really. The only thing they've maybe done is maybe not is changed the online a bit. I think they should have just kept it like it was in 2010. If they kept the coding or whatnot, I I don't know how programming works. Um, I'll admit that, but. If they just kept, somehow could keep the online like it was in 2010 and just change the career mode and offline stuff, that would be brilliant. So we talked enough about off, uh, uh, online, sorry. Now onto offline. Now, career mode is a solid thing still in F1 2013. You'll see Alex Zafros countlessly said that he enjoys career mode still very much. I enjoy career mode as well. Um, obviously, after a while, any game's going to get stale. Every, after you know, FIFA gets stale, Call of Duty gets real stale fast. Um, every game gets stale. Um, but good games get stale slow. They get you the real proper good games you could play for a whole year and it'll be fine. You know, you could like your GTA's of the world. You, you know your classic PS3 or Xbox 360 games. 
you could play those year round and they wouldn't get stale. Um, most games do get stale, and most of them get stale probably within half a year. This time, I, I've I've found F1 2013 career mode has got stale for me at least within about you know what what's this since October. So I'm gonna look at my calendar quickly. What's that been? Uh, wait, where's my mouse? Um, so it's December right now. So yeah, it was released in October. So after three months, it's got stale. Um, a big reason that of that, I think, is because they haven't changed career mode too much. Now I understand, obviously, the whole time we're talking about current gen. There's not a lot of space in current gen, um, and you got to remember, I'm talking about all this stuff in respect to F1 2014 and what we should expect and what we want and what we sort of need i think in in a way f1 2014 needs to be a, like flipping amazing it needs to be that big block blockbuster kind of boom leaving a massive crater and just going wow wow what the hell have we got here that and that, that was created by f1 2010 when it came to you know what is the current gen it needs to be that because otherwise the F1 franchise is getting a tiny bit stale. Um, these are just opinions, obviously, and you can disagree with them. You can agree with them. Either way, comment below on what you thought. Um, but yeah, getting back to on uh, offline, the career mode it's solid, but it does get a bit stale. And I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping and I want and we need, <laughs> especially YouTubers, but also just general public. You know, general public. I know a lot of you guys play career mode, and. <laughs> You know, if, if if you guys play career mode, I'm I'm gonna guess you have the same feelings as me at some point that it gets boring, and that's because nothing's actually changed. If you look really, really, really hard, really hard, nothing's actually changed. It's the same thing. Obviously, not not too much can change. Obviously, you know we you know F1 is a very stable sport. You know, cars are pretty much nearly the same. Um. The performance might change tracks are the same we can't change stuff in that respect but the outside stuff the immersion and f1 2010 they had this big kind of promo of be the driver live the life and that was an amazing mantra and it really worked in f1 2010 no one had menus like f1 2010 there were awesome menus you know you were in the paddock and you got to talk to press that was epic talking to press yeah it was the same question every time and yeah like you know it's season five of f1 2010 career mode you know whatever her name was in the interview room was still asking me the same question in season one but i didn't care because i could answer that and in my mind when she said so how was that race and i tried to and i chose a negative answer in my mind i could imagine i was slagging off fernando alonso i was slagging off sebastian vettel i was slagging off my team i could imagine that and be immersed in the in the in the thing that was career mode and i don't get that anymore f1 2013 takes you to a really cold menu that's blue and it's just it's just blue and cold and there's nothing there it's just it like even the menu like the main screen mate, it's in a wind tunnel it's so bleak wind tunnels aren't place for happiness wind tunnels are for really really into maths geeks who do aerodynamics the sort of person i'm training to i want to become in the future i want to become an aerodynamicist i know what i'm going in for it's gonna be a very boring life probably in the wind tunnels but obviously if if you were this is getting off the Point, but if you were there you'd want to do that but still it's not like a happy go lucky place it's not a place where a driver would be and i i have a you know on as much as online is important and the arl videos and other league races and the the, the rise of online through f1 2011 and 2012 has really boosted the game and it's become a big part of f1 20 uh, of the f1 franchise i still think offline is the biggest part and it should be the and it should be the biggest part of the game because offlines are always meant to be the biggest part unless you're getting towards the kind of cod thing but no one wants to get to that god no um yeah, I just really hope they make some big changes. For FI I'm I'm going to kind of compare to FIFA 14. Um FIFA 14 is the first FIFA I've enjoyed since FIFA 11. FIFA 12 through to 14 on the current gen 
just felt crap to me. The physics were wrong. You could make ridiculous shots that were just like, what, what, what just happened there? You could do skill moves that were just so stupidly just unrealistic. The, the gameplay just felt really just annoying and just didn't change at all. And FIFA 14 on the next gen has just literally just scrapped all of it. They worked from the ground up, I think, or at least halfway through up. And they've changed everything. The gameplay is so different. It's a whole lot slower. You have to build up play in the midfield. You have to, you know, you can't really just kind of pass to the striker and straight away score with the striker. You have to build up play nicely, get some space in there. Goalkeepers are harder to score against offline. They've changed it a lot. And it's so much better. And I actually enjoy FIFA now. Um, you know, and I haven't for the last three years. That's what F1 2014 needs to be. It needs to change everything again because it's getting really repetitive and that's the problem that that's the problem with game after game you know the kind of year releases that is a big issue i admit that and i'm not saying i'm sitting here saying all this stuff and i'm a complete genius of how to work stuff i'm simply suggesting stuff and if someone from codemasters is watching this Please do not kill me. Please do not think I'm trying to slag off the game because I do like this game, and I slag off the. I, I, and I'm sorry, I don't slag off this game. You know, just like willy nilly. You, you, if you're a Code Masters person, you follow most of the people in F1 community. You will see that literally people are ripping the shit out of this game every single week, and I literally cannot stand it sometimes. It's literally, like you have in your Twitter bios, or you call yourself part of the F1 community and you're ripping the shit out of the biggest F1 game. W what are you doing? What You're not part of the, you're frankly not, you, you shouldn't be part of the F1 community if you're sh ripping the shit out of the game we play, the the, 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 the F1 game. You're, I mean, yeah, you, you, you might be a part of the, mo the wider motorsport spectrum community, and you might be part of the GT6 community, the iRacing community, the R Factor, or whatever, Assetto Corsa, or whatever it's called. I can't remember the name. You know, you might be part of that, but you know, you're some some people are stating they're still part of the F1 community, and they're literally ripping the shit out of F1, and it really saddens me because it's it, at times it's such a fun game, it's such a fun game at times. You know, those moments in career mode that I have that when I record, and it's just so much fun to have wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles with career, with the career mode AI. And, you know, I don't know if anyone else does this. I might be incredibly sad for thinking this, What? but while I race career mode, I sometimes have those kind of thoughts in my head, like, ooh, I could, you know, I, I picture it in my head. I picture, like, I'm in a Grand Prix. It's a real-life Grand Prix. I'm battling Fernando Alonso, going around the outside. It's going to be a championship decider. It's going to affect the championship. And that's what I've tried to capture in the way I commentate career mode and stuff like that. Because it's, you know... Probably about 20% of it is imagination, that kind of be the driver, live the life, try to immerse yourself, and they've stopped doing that. They haven't done it since F1 2010. 2011, when they changed everything for... No, no, actually not 2011, sorry. 2011 did it still. 2012, when they changed the menu in the reboots. Um, you know, they were like, oh, we want a slick menu. Yeah, it's slick. It's really slick. I'll admit that. It's nice and slick. But it's less immersive for the career mode experience, and I think you need to get back to that. That, that, that's just my opinion, you know, these are all just my opinions, so please don't kind of get offended, or, or you know, if you're in Codemaster and you're watching this, um, don't get kind of, you know, like, don't kill me, um, and my viewers, don't, um, you know, you know, don't read too much into, you know, what I'm saying completely, like, it's just opinions, it's just my opinion, and I just want to make this video because the feelings were quite raw when I was thinking about it, um, yeah, um, I'm just hoping a whole lot for F1 2014, um, I really hope it's good, god I hope it's good, otherwise I don't know what I'm going to do, otherwise I might just quit YouTube completely, I mean, no one really care, my channel with 3,000 subscribers, no one really gives a shit, um, so I, I could easily just hop out whenever I wanted so I really hope but I really hope it's good because I love making videos when it's fun and at the moment it's not fun um, and I want it I want the fun back and it was so fun in 2012 um, it was fun while I was just doing it not making videos just for my personal private you know kind of playing it was so much fun in F1 2011 2010 2010 I played 14 seasons 
yeah, I was very young then, and I had no, you know, I had no other commitments, no real school pressures or anything. But I played fourteen seasons. I've played one season so far of F1 2013. I played two seasons of F1 2012, compared to fourteen in F1 2010. Think about that. Fourteen. Just shows you which game I enjoyed most, and which one, frankly, most people think is better. For the for the for the online, definitely. For the offline, yeah, it got a lot. It it, it got a bit better in some aspects. Twenty twelve, career mode had a lot of interesting stuff in it that was really cool, but the immersion left away. There were some good points from twenty twelve and twenty thirteen. You know, fuel strategies, tire compounds, tire scaling coming back in F1 2013 was a really good thing for career mode. It made it much more interesting, so good job, um, Codemasters, for that. Um, setup menus, they fixed that in F1 2013, so you couldn't just run 1-1 one, one wings everywhere. So good job for that as well. That was a really good move um, because I was sick and tired of seeing the same bloody setup at every track. It was just so stupid. Um, yeah, there are a lot of good points, a lot of good points, and... F1 2013 is a solid game for current gen. For current gen. Um, it's got a lot of flaws in the online. It's got a bit of a stale factor in offline. I'm basically summarising here. Um, but it's an all-round okay game. But it's definitely not the strongest of the F1 franchise. And I hope F1 2014 is going to be good. I really need it to be good. Otherwise... Uh, otherwise I just can't see myself doing YouTube on it I can't really see myself playing it too much because obviously I'll be at uni when F1 2014 comes out and I'll have limited time so I'm going to choose the games I play wisely at uni so yeah um, yeah this has been a very long video it's not a video I usually make so if you guys enjoyed it give it a like comment below on what you thought subscribe if you are new for F1 2013 content um, this has been a very, very different video to the one I usually make. Um, this is a lot like Harrison 101's video. It's very long, a lot of in-depth talking and a lot of opinions. And uh, it's very different for me. I enjoyed it though. Very, you know, I, I felt very strongly about what I was thinking in my head before I made this commentary. Um, so yeah, if, you know, I want to end on this final thing. I did read somewhere, uh, I think it was Paul Gilles. Um, Paul Gilles had an interview with someone and he said that he obviously can't um, discuss what's going to actually be in F1 2014. But he said they were building from the ground up again. I just want to say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that is true, if that is true, hallelujah. If they build from the ground up, that is going to be such a sweet game. Because they're going to rebuild everything with next gen in mind they're gonna you know have everything set up for future years and also they're gonna just blow it out of the park i'm hoping so yeah this has been a rather weird maybe slightly undertoned depressing sort of style commentary but yeah that's just I don't know, it's just generally how i'm being i've been feeling about the game and about youtube in general um but yeah I'm an Arab. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know if you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do tell me. I'll be quite surprised. But I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, <laughs> and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.